Runic alphabets first appeared among German tribes in Central and Eastern Europe. Some rune symbols are likely to have been acquired from other alphabets, such as the Greek, Etruscan, and Early Roman. The runes were made of straight lines to make the characters suitable for cutting into wood or stone. The earliest runic inscriptions on stone are dated to the late 3rd century AD, although it is probable that runic alphabets had been used for some centuries prior. Runes were used to write many languages, including German, Frisian, English, Danish, Swedish, Norwegian, Icelandic, Lithuanian, Russian, Hebrew, and other Semitic languages. The major runic alphabets called Futharks are the most well known. The Elder Futhark is thought to be the oldest version of the runic alphabet and was used in the parts of Europe which were home to Germanic peoples, including Scandinavian. Each rune, a mystery, secret, or whisper, stone holds an es esoterical meaning, an element associated with it. The runic alphabet is carved or written on the stones or pieces of wood. They are used as an oracle from which one seeks advice. Runic divination, or rune casting, is a form of divination much like the tarot, and is a tool to gain insight to a situation or circumstance. They work best if you detail your current circumstances and then ask a specific question. Rune readings are sometimes obscure, only hinting at the answer. Many individuals are familiar with the existence of the Futhark runes and use them for the purpose of divination, but there are lesser who are familiar with the witch's runes. These are a set of 13 pictographic stones crafted for use by witches. And that's what we have here. So witches, witches runes have 13 stones, and each of these stones have something carved in them but unlike the, um, the runic alphabet, we're looking at symbols that are familiar um, usually to witches. Now let me make sure I have a good, you can see them. Now these are uh, pictographs or symbols and they have, let me see, the sun the moon, the star, then we have the symbol for woman and for man. We have um, air or uh, I guess flight is what you could call it. They kind of look like birds, or maybe they would want to look like this way, but that's flight. Then we have waves, uh, which is, you know, water. We have this card, is, I mean this card, this stone is harvest. Uh, this one is uh, called romance. It sort of looks like the triquetra, but this one is considered romance. Um, we have the rings, we have the crossroads, we have the eye, and the scythe. Okay, so those are the 13 stones that are in the witch's rune set. And each of them... Um, have a specific meaning but again if you look on the internet you'll get just like when you're looking at cards uh, you'll get different interpretations so again this is going to be working with your intuitiveness um, your intuitive understanding of what these stones mean so when you cast them you can either put them in a pouch 
You can put all your rings, and then you can make these yourself. I purchased these online, and I'll have to put a link to the place that I bought them. I bought them at a fair, um, but I know that the people, people that I bought them from have an online website. Now, you can shake them up, and then you can pull out one. But what I tend to do when I do my castings is I take them all, and I shake them up. And then I drop them on this exact thing. And I'm looking at the stones that are in the circle. And what I do is I start with the one in the center, if there is a center stone. Now, if we look at the way that these fell, they're, they're sort of... Um, I might consider these two in the center because we're looking at the ones that only are face up. And I'm looking for in this circle, I'm looking for an inner circle. So if I were to start here and move in a diocesal direction, in a clockwise direction, then these two would be in the center. So I might want to look at these two and decide what this means and then start here and work around because these tend for me to be the center issue. So that would be um, romance and the moon. And then I would start with that, and then I would go in the interpretation around the circle here. And that's how you use the rune stones in um, cat doing a rune casting and then um, reading your interpretation. And for me, I find I connect very much, uh, very easily with these symbols and understanding what they mean. Um, and just as a, a quick point, I am offering Witches Runes readings on my website. Um, and if you are a subscriber of the Circle of Friends magazine, there is a coupon in the magazine uh, for a rune reading uh, from me, a Witches Rune reading. So if you're interested, I, I encourage you to, to create your own set of Witches Runes and try it out. And if you do, let me know how they work for you. Um, what I've done with these, as with any divination tool, is I've cleansed and consecrated them for working in, a, uh, in service for a sacred purpose, you know, just as I do my tarot cards, and I treat them with the respect that I treat my tarot cards. So let me know if you try it. Let me know how they work, or if you currently use runestones yourself. And as always, I love you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with others on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This way you won't miss any of my newly uploaded videos. And be sure you've connected with me on Facebook, either through my Cricket Song fan page, Lunar Wisdom business page, or by joining the Sacred Circle.